I was in the hospital about three weeks um, and I was stabilized. And so we quickly moved back to Oklahoma. Um, but here I am, I've got a baby, mm. jet lag. <laughs> I'm, I'm so ashamed. I'm thinking, what will our supporters yeah, think I of know. me? Mm. I'm, I'm just, I feel like a failure. And so I end up attempting to take my life and end up back in the ER and in the hospital. So this is mm. like back to back hospital stays, but this hospital stay is where God really changed my whole life. And so what happened was, is we, I'm there, I and mean, this is the lowest of the low bottom of the pit. I'm just, I'm still very focused on death. And two of my friends from church are coming to visit me. And I'm just thinking, what are they going to think about me? My hair is wild. I have no hairbrush, no makeup. So my, husband, all away. <laughs> my husband brought these ridiculous pajamas that don't even look cute. So I'm thinking, <laughs> what am I going to, there's no mask to hide behind. Right. And these friends are seeing me unedited in this filtered world, very raw. Mm. And, but they didn't come at me preaching. I did need scripture and that would come, but they just came and they sat with me. Mm. And one of my friends she said, Julie, I think that you were in the valley of the shadow of death from Psalm 23. Mm -hmm. And you know, the word is alive and it's active and it transforms our minds. And so even that little nugget of truth was enough to light this flame of hope mm -hmm. within me. And so they left and I was thinking, maybe I am like the psalmist in the valley. And I'm sitting in this um, common area right after. And this patient who's just been admitted, still on drugs, coming off drugs, she sits next to me and she stands up and walks past me. And she says out loud, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Wow. And I'm thinking of my hair and voices because, because it literally finishes the verse. Even though I walk wow. through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Wow. So I'm thinking, okay, maybe, maybe I'm not abandoned. Like, God, are you talking to me? <laughs> so I go to sleep, wake up the next day and the psychologist is there. He knows nothing about me, but what's on paper. I'm on suicide watch, my name, age, that stuff. And he looks at me and he says, Julie, have you ever read Psalm 23? Oh no. my gosh. And I'm just thinking, okay, there is no place so dark, so isolated, so locked away from society that God does not see his children. And yes, the presence of God is in the church and in worship services and Bible study, but it's also in psych wards. Yes, it is. And my shepherd knew where his sheep was. Mm. And the Bible says that we know his voice. Mm. And like the Israelites in the wilderness where God fed them manna, this is God. I don't have access to a Bible and that does not stop God. He's no. feeding me my manna. And that's where I realized, okay, at this point, medicine and therapy have started to really stabilize me, mm -hmm. but they don't produce fruit Yeah, because fruit is, a, is from the spirit, spirit. and yeah. joy and peace. And so that's where I realized medicine and therapy are good gifts, but Jesus yeah. is the hope.